National Women's Day is a time to reflect on progress made, to call for change and to celebrate acts of courage and determination by ordinary women who have played an extraordinary role in the history of their countries and communities. Now, it is also an opportunity to consider how to accelerate the 2030 agenda on building momentum for the effective, effective implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals, especially goal number five, which is achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. And also number four, which is ensure inclusive and quality education for all and promote to lifelong learning. Now, social commentator uh, on women and children, Mary Ikoku, uh, is joining us now via Skype from Lagos here. Uh, good morning to you, uh, Mary. Happy International Women's Day, first off. Good morning and happy International Women's Day to you too. Yes, I wish you the same. Now, uh, yes, the theme is uh, Press for Progress, but Let's mm -hmm. narrow it down to Africa and then, of course, let's it trickle to Nigeria. Have African and Nigerian women really made so much progress that they need to even build on in the first place? Well, we are, is a, we are pressing for progress. So what that means is that uh, it's a continuous um, thing. We haven't uh, made a whole lot of progress, but we definitely have made a certain reasonable level of progress. Okay, so what uh, aspects of uh, women empowerment should be looked at? Uh, because many would say it's quite disheartening at this time uh, as Nigeria moves forward really to compete internationally that Chibok school girls, some of them are not, the, are not yet back. Now, Dapchi girls have been added to the mix and there are so many, on, uh, so many girls forced into marriage almost on a daily basis uh, in some parts of the country. So what should be the focus as the world is celebrating women? The focus really should be, um, we should focus on goal five, basically. And that addresses the issues of the education of the woman and the girl child. Uh, because when you have a society that uh, is populated with education, educated women and children, uh, especially the girl child, you would begin to see a whole lot of transformation. Perhaps I think Nigeria hasn't quite achieved um, its worth in the Committee of Nations because we have continued to uh, overlook this population of people, the women. Um, secondly, we also need to look at the fundamental rights of the woman. It should, these are issues we should be talking about, the fundamental rights of the woman and the girl. So when you have treated the woman just like every other woman, hmm. uh, it beggars, you need to really understand that they will all have equal access to health care, education, life, everything, because women's rights are usually really what it is, is human rights. You're asking mm. that the girl born in Nigeria today be treated just like her brother that is born in Nigeria the same day. Um, so focusing on that is also very important. And we also look at the mother earth. Where we are thinking about the mother earth is the is the is our environment, the earth, the issue of global 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 change, you know, global warming. We need to look at that because it also affects women. It affects our production. It affects fertility. You can see somebody of um, uh, 30 is dealing with men, uh, early menopause and all of mm. that. So we have to look inwards and see that women are dealing with a lot of things. There are also environmental impacts on the girl child and the woman. Those are some of the things we should look at. Again, we should also look at women involvement in politics, in leadership. These are key areas because you cannot have a sane society when you have ignored or overlooked or even tech tactically uh, not sought or utilize the um, potential that are endowed in more than half of your population because women make up over 50% of Nigeria's population. Absolutely. And when you okay. take this okay. group of people out of your decision making, you have a problem with the country. Mm. Okay, so what role should men play uh, to uh, enable women achieve these set roles or can they achieve all this without the support of men? We need men. We need men to help uh, to to call in the woman when that decision. Because even if, even in the home, some men just take decision without conferring with their spouses. So it stems from a culture of a certain level of misogynism, and that's these are patriarchal system that uh, have 
constantly pinned down the woman. So if we can grow, we need more men who have grown above this culture, these certain cultural attitudes to help and you know, give that desired support where you begin to bring in more women to play in the, in the space in our society. So yes, we definitely do need men. But most importantly, we need men who are confident. Uh, because if you get weak men to support you, and when you get there, God has already endowed women. Women are strong. Women mm. are mentally strong. Women are, women, women are so well created. And honestly, we are powerful. So if we get in there, we are going to be more powerful. So we need men who are confident enough to accommodate um, the level of skills, sets, mm. and uh, uh, what do you call it, contributions we will be making. They will be able to have that level of confidence to accept us and allow us play just like they are playing, mm. or even better. Okay, but there's this common saying that uh, you cannot give what you don't have. Uh, some women mm. have been accused of not even uh, supporting uh, their fellow women. Uh, some would say maybe partly because they don't even see themselves as leaders. What do you have to say? Well, that, <laughs> I love, that, that is an age-long story. It's, it's a single narrative, it's a single story. I am a woman, the best support I've gotten in my life were from other women. I worked as a special advisor to the former Minister for Information and Communication. She mentored me. I've served under Dr. Konji Wella doing the graduate internship scheme. She's another woman and she's mentored me. And there's so many other women. I've, I'm also helping out with younger women who I'm carrying on in my work of life, who I'm, you know, mentoring. So when, when you hear all these things, it's not, uh, it's not uh, totally uh, the issue because you also have men who backbite themselves. You also mm -hmm. have men pulling down themselves. But when you put that narrative in the forefront, what it does is that it causes a reproach. It makes more women to say, okay, something that looks like it shows up. It says, oh, I heard it. I've mm. heard it before. I can't work with a female boss and all of that. That is mm. not really what it is. The truth is, once you have a woman in the helm of affairs, she treats everybody the way a mother would treat every member of her family. Do you say, oh, she's a man, I wouldn't treat you well because she's a woman, I wouldn't treat her. But the thing is that she will be more dispassionate. She will, she's going to, you know, treat the issues as she will, you know. So it's not that we can't, yes, I hear you, I know certain women, but it's not, we can't generalize these things. And no particular sex has monopoly of being selfish or pull down syndrome. Mm. It's across the gender. It's not really a woman thing, but... Uh, you know, we hear that a lot, but truly, there are women who support other women. Social commentator on women and children, Mary Ikoku, thank you for your time on TVC News. Thanks for having me. Yeah.